What is HRV? It's basically the time difference between the beats of your heart. And people use HRV or heart rate variability to let them know when they are under more stress than what their body and mind and physiology can handle. And the, the thing about training HRV and why it's so important to both know and raise it is because it'll raise your stress tolerance baseline which means the same things that might have stressed you out or lowered your immunity in the past will potentially not hit you as hard in the future because you will become more stress resilient. Why should I monitor my HRV if I'm already monitoring my HR, which is heart rate? It's very important to understand the difference between heart rate monitoring and HRV monitoring. So with heart rate, if you're between the range of, let's say, 60 to 100, and some thankfully have lowered that range to from like 60 to 90, they would say that you're doing okay. But outside, let's say if you're above 90, then you are putting excess strain on your heart. Like there's something going on that you need to uh, start paying attention to. But the thing is, sometimes somebody can have an in-range heartbeat so their heartbeat can be, let's say, between 80 and 85, all right? So they're still in range and their uh, old school Apple Watch will not beep at them, telling them that they're having some sort of a heart issue, but their HRV might be very low because there's not a lot of room for variation when your heart rate is in such a small range. Very healthy people, uh, very athletic people, tend to have ranges of when they breathe out, it might go down to like 60, maybe even low 50s. And then when they go up, it might go up to like 90. So there, there's like a huge variability and range between um, what happens to their heart when they breathe in and out. So this is very important to know and that's why simply measuring your heart rate is not enough. What are the lifestyle factors that will help me increase my HRV? So I'm just gonna go in order of what I think is just the most impactful, easiest, uh, and I'll go down the list. So the first is resonant breathing. So breathing at a certain frequency, which is approximately six total breaths per minute, I know, shocking, right? Like most people breathe like 15 breaths per minute, but six breaths per minute is, is a very, very healthy breathing pattern and that will raise your HRV. Uh, also, cold exposure. Cold exposure is very powerful. It doesn't, you don't have to like jump into a cold bath with ice if you don't want to. You can just like put a little bit of a, you know, some frozen organic peas on your neck from your freezer, uh, like I've showed in some of my other videos. Um, meditation, this one's obvious one, and anti-inflammatory diet, intermittent fasting, getting lots of good, deep, refreshing sleep, and exercise. Uh, I'll probably go into more details from these topics that I mentioned in future videos, but for now, this is just kind of a summary so that you can, you know, investigate them as you'd like. What are the lifestyle factors that decrease HRV? So eating a diet where there's like junk food, processed food, and um, even if your diet is healthy and it has organic food, but you have a bunch of food sensitivities to various items that you're eating, you're going to have HRV issues, uh, alcohol. Oh my God. <laughs> Don't get me started on that one. Even one drink. It's crazy. Um, shallow breathing and poor posture. Um, hitting it hard at the gym. So like hard workouts and not giving yourself enough time to rest. Uh, maybe taking a couple of days to rest, recover, you very much need those or else you will lower your HRV um, and potentially get injured. Chronic stress, that's, that's a given. Uh, 
acute and chronic illnesses, as well as many, many, many pharmaceuticals uh, that you might be taking. And unfortunately, I'm currently having to take. So yeah, that has caused my HRV to drop like a mopo.